Greetings, fellow investigators, and welcome to our video podcast, Into the Darkness, where my friends and I play the Call of Cthulhu role-playing game. I'm your host, Tom Rayleigh. The campaign is Horror on the Orient Express. It was written as a collaboration by over 20 authors, and it's available from Chaosium. I'm the Keeper of the Secrets, and this is episode one. So without any further delay, let's begin our journey into the darkness. When we look back and try to understand the mysterious events of 1923, we have to consider the people involved. We have to try and understand their motivations and their bravery in the face of dreadful circumstance. Let us look to them and hope that we can do as well as they if we are ever faced with such dangers. Our story will cover what we know of those events and include the history behind them so that future generations may analyze and draw their own conclusions. But for now, we will focus on those intrepid members of the Arcane Society and what they did. And so we go back to the very beginning, back before the horrors, before the train, back to mid-November 1921, in that haunted little town of Arkham, Massachusetts. It all begins with a telegram. Dr. Gabriel Neruda, professor of theology at Miskatonic University. My dear Dabby, warmest greetings from London, stop. Interesting investigation opportunity, Hughes Farm, Rutland, Massachusetts, stop. Possible manifestation appears at full moon, zenith, uh, uh, repeated four times, stop. Hopefully will not dissipate before examination stop. Samuel Hughes family is expecting investigation team. Please assemble stop. uh, Photographs, measurements, observations may need additional equipment. Uh, Interview witnesses and follow-up research stop. Send all findings to my London flat stop. Procure a cinemagraph if possible stop. Julius Arthur Smythe and... Well, uh, Dr. Neruda, I can see why you... uh... You asked me to come along. My c- cinematography skills will uh, be seems uh, they'll be needed. Yes, when I uh, I when I got the telegraphic, I couldn't think of any uh, better five individuals to contact. So yes. thank you all so much for coming. Uh, can I get you anything to eat? Any wine, perhaps? Oh no, I am fine. Thank you. I'm fine. Yes, thank you. I'll have a glass. Eat, Jen. Is wine the only libation? Uh, no, no beers. Well, uh, beers are awfully hard to come by these uh, days. <laughs> I know, I know. That dang dries out there, and their their prohibition. I will take a glass of wine then. If that's the best we have. I right. thank you very much. Oh. Was that the, to, uh, go ahead. Yes. I was going to say, is that the uh, only uh, information you got, Dr. Neruda? I was wondering what this appearance is that he was mentioning. Yes, this was, uh, this is all, uh, this is all he sent me. Um, just this, this telegram. Uh, but it is a, uh, it's quite interesting. He seemed uh, rather keen on somebody here investigating it with some thoroughness. And a personal interest, I mean, with the information uh, to be sent back to him in London. Uh, hmm. it, it's good to see it. It's good that he's uh, in high spirits again and interested in, in such investigations, uh, given the late, uh, the late unpleasantness. Well, this looks like perfect timing. This is, I've, my schedule's cleared up for a bit. Are you thinking yes. of heading out any time in the near future? Yes, oh. uh, I've been looking. I've been thinking of looking into uh, taking a bit of time out anyway. So this is well. The perfect. fall break at the university is coming up uh, around the Thanksgiving holiday. Hmm. True. True. How distant is this farmland? This Hughes homestead. About four hours drive. Ah, uh, it's a wide state. Yes. However, the next full moon is in three days. Ah. Uh-huh. And he said four manifestations. Does it mean four consecutive full moons, do we think? Or it oh, yeah. appears four times in a full moon? 
Mm. I would I would mm. lean towards interpreting it as four consecutive full moons. This would give the Hughes family, I suppose, time to appreciate that something unusual is happening and somehow reach Smythe. Yeah. Yeah, for uh, rumors to yes. circulate all the way back to London. Yes, it must be a bizarre, but it's a good opportunity, especially for us. Uh, thank you for the invite, Gabriel. I'm curious if they've reached out to, if anyone else has reached out to them. I wonder if someone might be uh, trying to just take advantage of some country folk and scare them. Mm -hmm. well, I suppose uh, if we go out there, we can certainly ask them. I, I don't know. Um, hmm. I don't know if anybody else around here who would necessarily know. Um, I mean, I am curious how Smythe... Uh, heard of it um but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm more than happy to to go out there if you if any of you wish to join me yes, I, yes. i'm happy to drive as well yes, we should so, have two vehicles we'll need a room for equipment oh yes yeah. yes indeed and we yes. should arrive before the full moon so we have one night uh with negative conditions so that we can pair that rationally to the night with positive conditions if they occur it is the 12th right now, so you've got three days. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, we, we have to go in with a clear head and a clear mindset. As Gunther said, it's probably uh, it's probably just some people playing a prank on the, uh, on the poor uh, poor farmers. Yes. But you know, you never you never know. I'm always uh, open to uh, proof of an afterlife. I just don't believe I've ever found it. Yes. Uh, still. Go, go on. Uh, uh, Julius uh, is not one to just jump at any uh, uh, story, little ghost story. He, I think he might have vetted this a little bit, at least enough to, to warrant this communique. Yeah, that is sure. He's a smart man indeed. Oh. So he uh, specified uh, that we try to take a cinematic film of some event. Uh, what else did he list? Samples, what? Photographs, measurements, <coughs> as much data as you could possibly. Uh, interview witnesses. Um... Oh, yeah. So he and, thinks. And did I, did I, I don't think I caught the, uh, the actual. Uh, phenomenon. What what is it that's that's occurred four times? It's he just says it's a it's a possible manifestation. Uh, I mean, it is a telegram, or uh, they have a pen, they have a tendency to be vague to save on on cost. Well, yes. I'm, I mean, if he's heard about it in London, perhaps it's in in a paper. I mean, you know, and uh, Samuel Hughes and his family are expecting us, or at least. Uh, expecting some team to investigate the matter, so it's not like we will be unwelcome or unexpected. I would Yes, we, we should just make sure this is thorough. We we get we get this out. We get any samples we can. We talk to the witnesses, you know, as Smythe wanted us to do. Do do a good job, and it might be a hoax. It, it could be something more. Either way, it's a good opportunity. Gunter, maybe you could uh, show me a thing or two about taking uh, pictures. I've always wanted uh, to get into this, but I know next to nothing. I've got this lovely little camera, though. Oh. I know it's not as good as, as yours, but... Uh... Ah, but it's always best to start, start a hobby... Uh, on a smaller scale to see if you like it before just diving straight in. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. I do wish he'd been more specific about what might manifest itself so that we had a better sense of what materials would document it. Uh, I wonder if it's possible to, to telephone the Hughes. Um, it might not be, but, you know, electricity and... Uh, phone lines uh, are always spreading. Yeah, surely. Why don't you see if the local exchange has information for them? 
Excuse me uh, for just one moment, gentlemen. So I'll go and uh, try to get uh, contact an operator and see if they're right. if, if we're able to get in, in contact. <clears throat> you contact an operator, uh, but the response is is that although they can get to Rutland, um, like the the town, um, most of the outlying farms don't have telephones. That's what I was. Uh, that's what I was expecting. And uh, thank you so much for taking the time to get that information for me. It's a fairly fairly remote area in Massachusetts, farmland. Yeah. Mm. Well, I guess it costs costs nothing to to try. Mm. When do, does the uh, club maintain like uh, back papers or? Uh, clipping or would we need to maybe go to you probably or... have you probably have files full of unusual things that are in the newspaper people you may maybe even have a clipping service that if uh you know if they run across anything unusual they send you the clipping so that you can review them most of them are just nonsense right i saw my old grandma in the, the bedroom <laughs> And she's not even dead. <laughs> so weird. Uh, yeah, I'm going to uh, head over to uh, where those are, are kept. Okay. You guys have a little sort of like a meeting house uh, that you call Corbin Hall. That uh, when you do have your meetings, your normal meetings are scheduled for Wednesdays, but they're, uh, there's like three weeks out. You only do it once a month. Um, so none of the other members are around. Okay. But you guys have all you guys all have keys. Oh god. You are oh, we're, circle, so. are we we here at Dr. Naruda's house, not at the uh Correct. club. Right. Oh, okay, all right. Sorry. I'll mention to the group that I I plan to do that once we break uh, once we uh break. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I guess that sounds like a, a fine idea. It's so we can assume that you will acquire the equipment that you need from the university. Um, in fact, they probably have a movie camera. Um, how you said you're going to go in car? Who's driving? Whose cars? What kind of cars are they? That you're going to? Well, Doctor York has a uh, an, a beautiful uh, 1920 Rolls Royce Phantom. Uh, it's it's in. Uh pearl white it's beautiful um so I'll, I'll drive um and i'll also uh take uh in addition to all the technical uh recording equipment i will also bring a a sketchbook um in order to just take some hand-drawn notes and things like that sketches absolutely mm -hmm. In the other uh, car? How many does this Phantom sit comfortably? Well, it can seat uh, four very comfortably. I, I've got a sedan. It's, it's uh, not quite as nice. But, Is uh, it a touring, touring car? Uh, a Humber 15. It can seat four. I think it's, in any travel of this uh, distance, it's good to have two vehicles in case there's an incident. Yes, it is indeed. It's a nineteen nineteen, not quite as new as yours, but still. She's in good shape, running condition. A car is a car, Teddy. Better than I got. Hmm. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to do? Oh, okay. Um uh Gunter. Um mm -hmm. you go and you check through the files for anything unusual in the last year or two and mm -hmm. you don't find any reference at all to uh to anything going on out in rutland and in the regular public library there is nothing in the last few weeks about rutland or samuel no. Hoos. No. Hmm. i wonder no. if they contacted Smythe directly somehow so that's probably a possibility maybe if they this makes me lean more to that they're 
they're probably not in on they're probably not doing it themselves or else they would want publicity maybe they are yeah i am quite curious now yes curious indeed well we will only get the answers by going uh, ourselves so are yes. you are you packing with the intention of staying there overnight? Well, you'll have oh, to. Yeah, here. at least a couple of days. I mean, want to yeah. thoroughly investigate. And plus, we've, at least I've got a little bit of time off. All right. Yeah. Pack for two days, two overnights. Yeah. So we'll assume since the full moon is on the 15th that you're going to arrive on the 14th. Splendid. So you might have as much as, you know, 24 hours or more before, you know, to set up and get everything ready. All right. So you guys hop in your cars. You've got, you've got, you know, some traveling supplies and you've got your equipment with you. Uh, the trip to Rutland is a long one. And it, uh, at first you're on fairly good paved roads, but then you start to get on, you know, country roads. And by the time you get to Rutland, Rutland's a very small rural town. There's a post office, a general store, and a gas station, and that's about it. Um, and then there's a few homes in the town. Maybe there's a schoolhouse. And then there are outlying farms, and each farm, you know, is miles from the next farm. You get directions out to the Rutland farm, or, or the, the Hughes farm. And uh, as you are pulling along the, uh, the road, uh, you see the Rutland, I mean, the, I keep seeing the Rutland, the Hughes farm up ahead of you. And it looks pretty much like that. Hmm. Nice. nice. Hmm. Three chimneys. Nice. What a, what a lovely eaten. place. Beautiful yeah. up here, away from, the, uh, away from the city, lovely home. It looks like it's well kept. It's mostly white clapboard. Um, <laughs> As we uh, passed through the little the little town of Rutland, um, uh, I'm my assumption is that it was daytime. Yeah. So business hours. I, I want to pull in and top off the tank so the vehicle has a full tank of gas, and that then happens. proceed on to the uh, farmhouse. Okay. I'll this... I'll do the same. I'm following following Doctor York. So. All right. Um, there is a general up. store. There is a there. yeah, just small town stuff. So if there's something you need there, probably a sheriff. There's there actually there's probably not a sheriff. There's probably a sheriff that covers three or four different towns. Mm -hmm. He might be stuck in a bigger town. Than this. County sheriff. This is not right. the county seat by any means. Right. Um, so you pull up, and as you do, um, there's a couple things that that you notice if you're not country folk, you might think they're a little unusual, but they're really not. One is that the, the, the fields are all fallow at this point. Um, it's November. So harvest is done. Uh, everything is plowed under for the winter. Uh, and there's no real farm work going on anymore. The house is in good condition. It's well painted. They probably painted it during the summer. Um, they're all ready for you know winter to, to set in. It's slightly hilly, so you can't really see the whole property, but you know that it's probably a fairly large property. Uh, you pull up, and as you do, uh, a gentleman comes out of the house. Uh, he's dressed in overalls, and he has on a hat. Um, but he's clean. I mean, he's not like a you know dirty or anything like that. He comes out and stands there. You notice his wife steps out onto the porch. Uh, as you pull up your car and uh, he, uh, he yells something back at the house. And after a couple minutes, a couple of boys, uh, they look like they're maybe 14, 15 years old. Uh, they come running out. They're dressed in overalls. Their hair is a little messed up and stuff like that. But they come running out and start walking towards your car as you're parking. And, um, uh, they pull out rags and they start getting all the dust and dirt off your car as uh, you guys step out of your car. Mm. And uh, this gentleman steps forward. Uh, 
Uh, hello. Are you, are you Howdy. Samuel Hughes? I am Samuel Hughes. Oh, yes. I am a I am a Doctor Naruda. Um, come from Arkham. We were told that you were uh, experiencing some kind of manifestation on full moons. Yes, yes, yes. So we were told that you'd be coming. This is my wife Sarah, and uh, my two boys, Bobby and Billy. Um, they will uh, they'll help you out with. Uh, you guys got some luggage and some equipment, I believe. Uh, my wife has made some lemonade. Uh, mm -hmm. You fellas hungry? We can go into the kitchen and have a talk. Oh, yes, you have such a such a lovely home and such a lovely family. Uh, thank you well, so much for uh, your It's a big place for... Uh, <laughs> we, we was planning on having a lot more kids, but we only ended up with two. Mm. Well, you know, sometimes uh, God works in mysterious ways. Indeed, indeed he does. We've got some rooms set up for you inside. So uh, I'll have my boys uh, put your stuff inside and we can decide where you go. Uh, well, come on inside. Um, I, I'll grab, I'll grab my medical bag. I have a, you know, one of those, uh, medical leather, medical attache kind of bags. Mm -hmm. I'll uh, grab that just out of habit and carry it, but, uh, I'll show the boys, uh, where the, uh, the rest of the luggage and equipment is, you know, so that they can access it. I'll also, uh, pull out of my pocket, $2 bills and give each boy a dollar bill. Uh, and in giving them the dollar bills, I'll just kind of look at their, you know, look at them in the eyes and everything. Just a, just a pretty quick look to see, you know, do they seem uh, well nourished? You know, do they, are they eating well and and uh, and move on? Uh, it looks I... like they're in really good health. Freckle face boys spend okay. a lot of time out in the sun. Okay. Um, all right. So eyes are eyes are clear and bright, and you yeah. know, good smiles and. And their uh, their you know handshake and everything so they have pretty good muscle mass it's right correct. they're not atrophied or anything correct. okay they're also yeah. quite quite polite they've all right got, excellent they've got country manners hey, they're all fantastic. yes sir yes sir you know. yeah well I thank them for their uh, hospitality and their uh, service and dusting off the car and give them each, you know tip them each dollar and show them the luggage but I'll carry my own uh, medical bag and mm -hmm. head on okay. inside and introduce yeah, you... myself to uh, Mr Hughes uh, Doctor York. Pleased to meet you. Uh, Dr. York, please have a seat. Um, While I'm so, walking to the house, I'm going to look, see if like there's a, a possibly a place where a generator could be where the, it's the house wired for electricity. I'm sure they don't have electricity from town, but maybe a generator around. Or Correct. There is a, it looks like there is an outbuilding uh, that's got wires going to the house and you can hear sort of the hum of the, or the, the the sputter of the, the generator as it's out there spinning. It's not particularly loud, but right. Not, and you can okay. see the wires just going there. There's no wires coming in from town. Mm -hmm. How does the outside look? Is it is it like a well kept garden area, or does it look pretty rough, pretty quick? It's it's well kept well for done. November. Okay. Yeah, you can see that there's mulch underneath the trees, and there's. Uh, that some of the bushes and things have been trimmed back. Oh. Um, the roses have stopped blooming. There's still a lot of, um, uh, in the in the outlying areas, you can see there's still a lot of leaves on the ground, uh, but up near the house where the, the trees have lost their leaves, they've been raked up and probably burned. You imagine there's probably a burn pile out in the back. And there might be some gourds still in the, like house garden field, but the, Farmland proper is tilled. Yeah, you for can see some. Fallow. You can see some pumpkins out there uh, that are still and in the field. Probably hay is organized, and the soil that we see looks healthy and dark brown. And looks from where you're standing, it looks it looks well. Looks enough. like a fun, looks like a healthy farm. Yeah. Not noticing that uh, Doctor York's tipping the kids around his car. I I tip the kids around my car and thank them also. Thanks, thanks, young men doing a great job i appreciate our, our pleasure sir and they're 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 kind of between shy and curious but they're too polite to sort of accost you with uh, questions maybe later um, so 
they unpack your stuff. They bring it into the front room of the house and you all file in and go to the kitchen. It's a big kitchen. Um, you're really in, at the, the, the dinner table is where you are. Uh, that's all over to one side and it easily could fit 10 people. It's a big old you know, wood block table. Um, everything has a kind of quaint, you know, late 1800s uh, style to everything, which is not that old for 1921. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they sit you down. His wife is uh, very smiley and friendly, and she gives you all uh, lemonade, asks if you want cookies, or if, if you'd like, if you've eaten, she could fix some lunch. Oh, lemonade would be be fine for me. Thank you. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Yes, please. So, you folks, did you have a? Did, how was your trip out? Here? Oh, it was it was fine. It's always nice to see the to get out of the city and see the woods and the see the farms. And... It reminds me of back home. Well, back when I lived in England, seeing the country. So. Ah, so it's always nice. Yes, uh, I agree, uh, Dorian. It does remind me as well of the the uh, Swindon countryside. Lovely out here. So you folks probably have quite a few questions for us. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Just get, yeah. Just right off the bat, can you describe what this phenomenon is that you're experiencing? Sure. Uh, yeah, I can give you the whole rundown. Um, now, I'll take you out there uh, so you can get a look at what I'm talking about later after we're refreshed and so forth. But, oh, of course. So it all starts about four months ago. I don't know if it was going on before that because the circumstances were a little unusual. See, I, I usually sleep like a rock. But about four months ago, I was, you know, restless. It was the middle of, you know, late summer. I was thinking about the harvest and I was having trouble going to sleep. So I was up around about midnight. I was uh, sitting on the end of my bed. My wife was asleep and there was a light that came through my window. I mean, it wasn't a bright light, but it was kind of purple, kind of odd. Right. So I stood up and I walked over to the window and I looked out and on our back 40, we've got a, a pond and I couldn't believe it, but there was a sailing ship of some sort in the middle of the pond. And it was a glowing like, like it was lit up with St. Elmo's fire. And I, honestly didn't believe what I was seeing. So I went down, I put on my, my dressing gown and I went downstairs and I walked outside and I only got about halfway to the pond when it just suddenly vanished. And hmm. I was, I stood there and I, I thought, okay, maybe I'm half asleep. Maybe I'm dreaming. Maybe I'm tricking myself. So I, I went back inside and, I didn't say anything to my wife, but I kept thinking what other events are taking place at this strange moment. And I did notice that the moon was full and I'd never seen this before. So I waited, I waited about a month until the, the full moon came around again. This time I stayed up. I knew it was coming. I checked my farmer's almanac when the full moon was going to be there. I waited. And this time I made sure my wife was awake. And uh, we didn't stay upstairs. We walked out on the back porch. And sure enough, right about midnight, right when the moon was as high as it could be, this sailing ship just suddenly appeared in the middle of the, the pond. So we walked out there. We walked right to the edge of the pond. And uh, there it was in the middle of the pond, uh, sort of flow, not, not, not one of those old fashioned kind of sailing ships, but something a lot more modern. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, we couldn't see the ponds fairly big. We couldn't get, get up close to it because the water, but 
it sort of shimmered there in the light with this sort of glow, like a purplish glow. And uh, I mean, it was the strangest thing I'd ever seen. And then it sort of, it sort of wiped away. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. Like it didn't like move. Well, it sort of moved, but it was almost like it, it moved sideways and it was gone. And that's when my wife, who didn't believe me when I told her before, but now she did. She said, you know, I read an article in the newspaper about some fellow over at the university in Arkham, Massachusetts. Um, maybe we should write to him and see what he says. Uh, and that was your Mr. Smythe. So we wrote to him and we didn't hear anything for a while. Um, we didn't know why, uh, but apparently he's not there anymore. Uh, so they must have forwarded the mail uh, to his new location. And anyways, it took some time. Um, the last time the thing manifested, uh, it didn't seem to last as long. Because it was lasting about 20, almost 30 minutes the first time. But now it was only down to about 15 minutes that it was there. And then it sort of gets wiped away. It's very strange. So that's why you're here. Um, we have no idea what's going on, but fortunately the pond is still, uh, it's still liquid. It's not frozen over. Uh, my boys have a, a rowboat out there. During the, uh, the various manifestations, uh, did it have any significant uh, uh, changes about it other Otherwise, like maybe direction it was facing? Yes. No, it was facing the same direction. Um, and there seems to be, I don't know if I'm imagining it or not, but there seemed to be some movement to it. But it was really slow. Hmm. Movement, just, uh, movement in the pond or movement of uh, no, the pond people stayed on the boat? Perfectly, the, the pond stayed perfectly flat. In fact, I think the boat might have been a little above the water. Hmm. Hmm. It's all uh, very odd. So you're saying when it vanished, it moved sideways? Yes. It's almost that like a last time, blink of an eye. Last time it was like, well, have you ever seen a slideshow? I yes, saw one yes, yes. a few months ago. It was really an interesting thing to see, but it's right. just pictures, pictures. Yeah, kind of the way a slide, when they're changing slides, it sort of moves to the side well, and it's okay. gone. Mm. That's mm. what I was. But it it came picture. in that way too. It kind of came in that way too. Huh. And that is uh, odd indeed. Hmm. Well, so uh, I, we'll get to the bottom. So a, a full moon. From the human eye, it seems like it's it can be up to like a three day event. Would you have these manifestations on each of those three evenings, or is it only in the the middle center evening? You know, when it is truly at its fullest moon, not not you know. 98.5% full, only at 100% full? So is it, instead of it being the three-day event, is it only just a single night? Well, I haven't I haven't seen it otherwise. I, I mean, I kind of kept, you know, I don't know exactly when the full moon is going to be truly full. Yeah. yeah. But so, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't necessarily at midnight either. It was, mm -hmm. it seemed to kind of it was close to midnight that first time, but then it's kind of drifting a little bit later each time. So maybe a, maybe a question, a question on the light. What what was it like? You're saying it's a purple, purple, like a purpley yeah. glow. Well, have you ever seen Saint Elmo's fire? Yes, you know what yes. that is. Yes. And the lightning is going to strike, and there's kind of a, a sparkle, sort of 
shooting up from the top of you know tent posts yeah. and I mean posts and things like that. Did kind you uh, did you ever feel strange around us at all? Any any well, headaches? I mean, I mean uh, the hairs on the back of my neck went up. Mm. That's that's uh, normal. It was, it was actually pretty bright. It was pretty bright in the middle. It was, it was bright. So yeah, the second month. You showed your wife as well. Have the boys also seen it now? Well, I didn't. I didn't want to scare them. And Why? no neighbors have come. You have, as far as we know, we only have two witnesses. Near, nearest neighbors, uh, three miles away. So, hmm. so only you and your wife were only in the facility. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the boys well, have heard us talk, but I make them go to bed. So, uh, um, okay. So you yeah. say that that each it got shorter each time. And then it was showing up later each time. Would the amount of time that it showed up later, like, would that be the same equivalent of the time that it got shorter? Like the first night, night it showed up at midnight. Let's say it went away at 1230. Next time did it show up at like 1210 and still went away at 1230. I, I wouldn't know, sir. I, oh, okay. hmm. I, I didn't keep any real records of it. It's just sort of seems and, that way. And when you say the image is floating above the water so this image of a boat that you're seeing are you seeing the full bottom of the boat the keel and everything is above the water so you're not seeing an image of a boat that is in water with a you know up to its water line you're seeing the full bottom to include the keel no i'm it's not quite like that it's I guess how do I just I guess I'm not really seeing the bottom of the boat. It's kind of flat. Does it it's, appear sir, to be lit by the moon, even though it is also a phosphorescent electric? Does um, it appear to cast a shadow on the water? It's have you ever seen a uh, have you ever seen how they make pictures, how they make photographs, and they use yeah. something called a negative? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. It kind of looked like a negative. Mm -hmm. Like what okay. should have been dark was light, and what should have been light was dark. Okay. So I don't really know where the light was coming from. It was, I, I get the strangest feeling too, like the ship didn't feel like it should be there, like it was out of place. And, and yes. more so, I mean, just because it was very, very strange looking ship. Well, it would feel out of place because of where it is appearing to you. Sir. But I am sure it's there's some reasonable explanation or, uh, but I'm sure we, when we see the site and are able to actually look around a bit and you might be able to draw a few more conclusions. Yeah, if you're uh, if you're refreshed, we can uh, take a walk out there. Oh, just just one more question. Uh, when you mentioned uh, it, sort of the image swiping to the left or to the right, um, do you recall? Did it did uh, in all occasions it swipe in the same direction? Whether well, it was yeah, I'd say so. Okay, all right, interesting. So the image is associated, is aligned, same direction of the swipe. Okay, interesting, thank you. And do you recall what was the weather like on each of those evenings? Was it, was there a fog? No, it was pretty in the clear. Air? Pretty clear, huh? Okay. Did you walk, a, kind of walk around to see, hey, did the, uh, this image have like, three dimensions or was it more of just a two-dimensional picture because you described it as a slide makes me we actually started to walk around like i said it's a fairly big pond so mm -hmm. we didn't get very far before it disappeared gotcha okay mm. okay but i would say it's like a real ship it didn't look flat mm. curious that uh, is curious indeed mrs hughes the lemonade is delicious thank you very much um oh my pleasure I I, uh, I would love to be able to look at this uh, pond or small lake while we have good light in the middle yes. of the day. Uh, do you know how deep it is in the center or where the 
ship appears? Yeah, it's probably about eight feet deep in the center. And, and this ship probably... seems like it would be much too large for eight feet under, yes? If it's a I ship. Don't I don't know that much about ships. Mm -hmm. uh, you said something about the keel. I'm, I think I know the word, but I don't, I don't know what a ship actually looks like out of water. Let's go to the pond. Let's go take a look. Um, uh, do you have... Uh, uh, might be a little muddy. Um, it rained a couple of days ago. Um, we expected um, to sleep out in tents and things. We are not. Oh, uh, oh. Well, if you've got if you've got galoshes or something like that, you can put those galoshes on. You don't want to get your nice shoes dirty. Um, no. But yeah, you'll you'll sleep upstairs. All right. So he walks you out there. It's a nice little farm. As you step out the back door, there's a couple of apple trees. Um, that are growing, and uh, you start walking along a, a, a little sort of back road. It's part of the property, but like I say, the property is a little hilly, so you can see the house behind you, and as you come up over a little bit of a, a hill and you look down, here's this big pond. Um, it's probably about a 1,000 feet across, um, it's at about you know three football fields across, and um, off in the distance you can see there's a line of trees, but they're maybe you know a few hundred feet away from the pond. There's actually nothing growing right around the pond. Um, oh wow! Hmm. So it's a hmm. few hundred feet from the pond edge to the tree line. Yeah, it's wow. It's like so it's this, a, it's this a area small just, lake. Yeah, it's a de it's a depression in the the sort of hilly country, and you can see it's farmland all around. Um, and then there's not much, you know, there's high weeds and stuff like that growing around it in places, and a few a few rushes and, and brambles. Um, and there's a little uh, rowboat that's sitting there. It's flipped upside down, but mm -hmm. it, you know, it's one of those things that one or two people could flip it back over really easily. Right. Did when the boys come out with us? No, the boys, the boys, oh no, the boys stayed back at the house. Um, the boys. When you said it was a, sorry, when you said it was a pond, Mr. Hughes, I wasn't expecting a massive. Oh, it's not that big. I mean. Uh, was, how many acres? I was expecting the, small. How many acres is the property in total, Mr. Hughes? 200, 300? Yeah, a few uh, hundred. How, 500? I mean, you said your nearest neighbor was a, a few miles away. Right. And I assume there is maybe some woodland between farms. Yes. Because where it gets hillier, it's not very arable. Right. Uh, so it's private, and this is, uh, yeah, the, the land by the pond is not as good to till, so you live it. Do you have ducks and things, I, I assume? Ducks show up. This is the, this time of year they've all left. <clears throat> Excuse uh, yeah. me. And the boys used the boat just to play around in the summer. Now, is, is there a mist or anything that, or a fog that clings about the pond ever? Not it depends on the time of year. But this time of year, no, nothing. Mm. So I'll, and it'll I'll, freeze over. It'll freeze over in the winter. I I mm. lean over towards uh, Gunther and say, uh, in in your experience, uh, how far can a projector? shoot out an image but i'm i'm looking at that tree line that tree line looks awfully far away to to put out an image yeah several and hundred feet indeed um it would be I so don't. bright that you'd be yeah, able to yeah right yeah i kind of explained as i go on if it if it was from the tree line right you would it'd be almost like going to the picture show. You know, you would say, if you look up, you can see the light coming, coming down. Uh, hmm. I almost wonder like if maybe they've, uh, they've, they've got something where maybe in the water that, you know, they've, they've somehow rigged it. So it's able to project up from the water. It'd be more likely. Yeah. Yes. Ed Edison's going to walk down, maybe hopefully be able to maybe find a, a, a stick and just kind of walking by the rushes, kind of poke through the the rushes with the stick, and just to see if there's any 
anything out there, any kind of evidence of activity or anything out there, any, um, anything crushed f- down or anything? Probably a few fairly large uh, bullfrogs, you know, leap into the water as you, you come there. Uh, it's late in the season for them, but they're, they'll go into hibernation. He says they have turtles out there too, but the turtles will all be asleep by now okay. uh, at the bottom of the pond. How murky is that water? Is it clear or is it like mud practically? It's, it's you know, it's clear for a couple of feet in, but it's got a lot of, you know, algae and stuff growing. You can see it's fairly clear, but you can't see the bottom. I, uh, who wants to go and row to the rough center and see how deep it is? Yes, I would like to for sure. Well, here, let's turn that over for you. And he turns, he helps turn over the boat. But be, before, I just want to get a few uh, samples of the mud around the lake. Mm-hmm. And okay. A bit like that before we go on the boat. Yes. Yeah, Samuel, have you ever sounded the pond? Oh, I don't know what that means, sir. Uh, measuring how deep it is. No, no real need to. Hmm. The boys are good swimmers, I assume. Oh, yeah. We're all good swimmers. I mean, uh, we've touched the bottom. That's why I say it's only... Yeah. You know, if you can drop down and feel the silt and pop up, then, yeah, I'm not sitting. Right. So the shallow. And the fish are wood? Well, we don't really get fish. I mean, we get little minnows and stuff like that, but nothing edible. Got mm-hmm. um, turtles. But the turtles, I don't know what they eat. They eat vegetables or... Maybe they eat the little fish. Yeah, this isn't big enough to have real fish. I could stock it, but I don't want to stock it. We're no. we're farmers. We're not fishers. Uh, do you have well water or spring water? We have well water at the house. Fresh and clean. Very nice. Very cold. Mm-hmm. Is it is it a pump well, I assume? It's a, I don't know if they had automatic wells back there. It's probably a hand pump well. You might even pump the kitchen sink, I imagine. Yeah. A little bit okay. from the cistern. Hmm. But there's probably not a, a well. There might be a well. I don't know. But uh, I collected a couple of samples. Yep. I, uh, I'm ready to go see the middle. Uh, so about the, uh, the ship, uh, directly in the center, would you say? I don't know. Probably close to it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe we, we, if we go out, Dobrovsky, we can we can wave and they can say if we are in the right place. Yes, 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 indeed. And I plan when they go out there to start making notes of where the best places to set up cameras to capture the uh, okay. phenomenon. I'll, I'll do similarly for setting up maybe like a like a simple duck blind or hunting hunting blind in a little dip in the ground 100 200 feet away so I can observe it. Okay. So you get in the boat, you head out there. Let's say you found a stick or something long enough. Um, the oars aren't quite long enough to hit the bottom, but you find a stick long enough that you can Put down there and yeah it's about 10 feet deep and very gradual okay. as it comes up to the, the edges how how clear is it is it still very much well it's fairly clear the thing is is that the bottom is fairly dark because it's got yeah, it's all dead rotted leaves and everything else that's blown into it and it's not like a swimming pool mm-hmm. but yeah you can see the stick as it goes down for, for quite a ways so from where we are, do we what anything stand out from where we are? Any just the farmhouse. Just the farmhouse, the tree, yeah. the tree line. The everything's tree line norm, there. everything's normal looking. Yes. Right. We don't get out to the center and find a hidden platform. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah. No, that's not what I was getting at, but yes. a, big, a big projector under the water. You know. Oh no. Knew it. So we, yeah, we take a sketch of roughly the shape of it and the higher elevations and all that. And that would, that would make this job a lot easier <laughs> if it was. Uh... And Mister Mister Hughes hasn't like 
done any kind of calculations or measurements. So it gives you kind of, yeah, it's going to be like right there in the water. And, but you'd really have to kind of walk around to be able to triangulate, you know, if you. Mm -hmm. This is what I'm kind of doing, you know, because I want to make sure I get a couple good spots. To... Well, uh, all right. Well, uh, because this would be a, it might be opportune to maybe take a swim at some point. They say they go swimming. Oh, in November. Just, uh, if you want to, that water is freezing. I know it's it's cold, but yes, this is the this is the pole in you. Yes, I am. I am used to the cold. That is why I wouldn't mind. Uh, well, you don't. Really I do not. You, you you may not have. I guess Doctor Ellison Edison could probably tell you what the temperature of the pond is. With his, yeah. Uh, yeah. maybe he can advise me against it. <laughs> well, you stick your hand in, you can tell it's you know yes. cold. Yes, he's probably even too and cold. If I, for... if I tell you, it's from the shore because I am not on that boat, and there's no way I'm going out on that water. Oh well, yes, you. <laughs> um, yes, maybe. Yeah, Maybe not know, the it, right time. Even the even the pole inside of me. You know, if I stick my out. hand in for five minutes, I can stop feeling my fingers. So it's much. probably in the forties. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, the first frost has already happened out here uh, a a weeks bit, ago. Yeah. Light frosts at night in the end of October out here. For so yeah, it's chilly. All right, so it's beautiful. We uh, we flit around for a few minutes, smoke and look at the clearish sky and watch maybe some birds a, fly by and then... Maybe I should uh, I've got the kid take a water sample as well. He said he wanted samples. So. Yeah, there's no harm in it, yeah. And we're in the middle, so I will take a little sample of water. So... Um, so... Uh... I'll walk up to uh, to Mr. Hughes, and uh, as as it seems like we're starting to get uh, kind of wrapping up our initial uh, observation of the of the pond area, and I'll go to to, uh, to Mr. Hughes and say, um, Mr. Hughes, um, Samuel, may I, may I call you Samuel? Of course, yes. Uh, it's uh, just for. Uh, uh, Part of the investigation just to to get a baseline if it's all right with you i'd like to um do just a very cursory examination of yourself and your wife just to make sure that you know we aren't that possibly we're not crazy <laughs> yeah. wasn't going to put it quite so bluntly but uh, uh but if you if you don't mind well you are the the doctor you are the the scientists, and in this day and age, we trust what scientists tell us because we're smart. All right, yes. Um, he agrees to that. Can examine all of them when, when we get back to the house. Great. Fantastic. Won't take very long. All right. So tell me what preparations, uh, I mean, other than the obvious ones, you're going to take you're going to take a film. You're going to take photographs. You're going to what? What measurements? What, what are you going to be able to do to take measurements? And are you going to be in the boat when it happens? Uh, I will not be in the boat because I want to be uh, making sure I got the camera. I maybe have a, like a little. You're sex. taking care of the camera. Yeah, no. I would be on the boat. I would yeah, want to I be could, on the boat. I would happily join you, uh, Dorian, if you don't mind. I am yes. no good with cameras. <laughs> I think that given that we assume that there might be some sort of optical illusion occurring, the most important thing is that we are in several different vantages in terms of angle and distance. So yes, yeah. No, yeah if you take if you take pictures from different points of view, you can. Construct composite sort of 3D model of it. Yeah. Yeah. After going through my first crash courses with Gunther and in my camera I have, which I'm a little familiar with, but I want mm -hmm. to just get more familiar with it. I'll go about a hundred feet away from Gunther, orbiting the pond farther away from the house. I'm, I want to, my goal is to get 
on the opposite side of the pond sure. and then set up my little duck blind where I can just sort of slip out of sight and just lay observe, uh, observing the area with yeah. a camera and binoculars. Okay. And if I understand correctly, it's not tonight that we're expecting the phenomenon. It's the next night. Next right. night. So tonight I propose to Teddy that we go out and capture images of the pond about at the same time we expect to see the boat. And that will give us an excellent opportunity to me to coach you along with some of taking photographs at night. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Gunther. This, this will help. So far as it, I need to take better pictures for the university. All right. So you all return to the house. Uh, Dr. Edison, you do your examinations. You examine the boys as well. They appear to be quite healthy. You know, what you'd expect from farm folk. Um, they're not going to be perfectly healthy, but they're healthy enough for, for what you'd expect. Um, the, uh, you know, I'm, I'm doing like optical tests and things. I'm, you know, I'm checking their ears and, and, you sure. know, I'm, I'm looking to see if they've got, you know, is anybody suffering from any kind of, of uh, infection or do they have a fever? Do they have, you know, um, uh, do the pupils, are they reactive and dilated? I mean, you know, so I want to try and rule out any type of, uh, physiological cause for hallucinations audible and visual hallucinations and uh and just kind of you know look at the whites of their eyes and look at the the coloring of their skin if that seems like they're you know malnourished or anything um you know uh, a look at the uh you know go ahead and do a medical for me. do a medical uh and ought to. Yeah, they seem to be in fairly good condition. Yeah, I took that skill. Um, uh -huh. He and she are, you know, prematurely aging only because they're out in the sun. They're working hard all the time. That's farm life. So it's not that unusual for what you'd expect from them. Yeah, and I sort of, I would like to, if Dr. York doesn't mind, it doesn't impede things, I would like to sort of peripherally interview the family. And it's mostly uh, uh, very straightforward questions. Have you, has the land been in your family for long? Uh, did you yes, both come yes. from the area? These mm. sorts of things, just the historiographical yeah. You know, both when did your people them. come to the United States? Well, both of them came from this area, met and just got married. It was their families that just sort of, you know, grew together. Um, they don't know much of their ancestry. Uh, they know a little bit, you know. But as far as they know, they're Americans. And maybe grandma came from Virginia or something like that. But. Obviously, they go back farther than that to to aim uh, to the you you'd guess from their their the way they look they're probably English stock. Or, yeah, the know, name views them. suggests that they're British yeah. Isles at least in part, and yeah, and the and the family has been is was it his wife's family or the husband's family and three generations like that is enough to say they don't yeah. know anything about any ships, right? Yeah, in their history, right. Uh, and they also don't appear to be first cousins or siblings or anything. It's just That's correct. The boys have a lot of freckles, so you can guess maybe there's a little Irish in there. Maybe there's red tinge to the hair, and you know. So yeah, you're, it's 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 what you'd expect. They don't seem to be unusual at all. And uh, also in the kitchen, just kind of check the uh, food stores. Um, do the uh, the fresh foods are they still um fresh and ripe well the, at this point things. at this point they're starting to dip into the canning stuff the stuff that they've canned um lettuce actually is a cold crop but i'm not sure how much people actually ate lettuce back then um it, the vegetables and the food that they're eating the the meat that they're eating is stuff from the farm uh, or stuff that they've acquired from town. She's baked a she's baked a pie, which uh, she got. You know, she 
does purchase flour and sugar and stuff like that from the town. Um, but they don't. you know, you said there were apple trees outside, and right. there the fruit looks decent, fairly healthy. Yeah, wholesome. Yeah. Winters, it's past the worm season, so they probably have chickens. Maybe a cow. Probably chickens, but I it's not. They have, maybe they have a cow. Yeah, for milk. Yeah, it's not milk. for slaughter. Yeah. Slaughter when it gets three or four years old, then they'll get, sure. then get another one. Prior to returning to the house on the way back, mm-hmm. I, did I notice, you know, going around the, the pond and such, did I notice any uh, good size animal tracks at all? Anything? Do a spot hidden for me. Uh, spot hidden or tracking? Uh, oh, bingo. Oh, five. Okay. The, the only thing that you find that it's probably deer track. Okay. Um, but nothing larger than that, you know. Um, it's possible deer occasionally come in from the woods and drink. Mr. Uh, Hughes, do you do any hunting at all, or do you need a firearm to protect from a bear incursion or something? Well, we don't don't usually have bear, but yes, I do have a shotgun. Occasionally and we get, didn't... you know, wolves. And, Ah, wolves. Wow. Oh, it is hilly, yeah. I don't uh, have much livestock, so it's not it's not a big problem for me. Chickens, you know, foxes maybe might show up once in a while. I understand. And you didn't you didn't think this uh glowing vessel on the pond was so strange that you were inspired to fire on it? Well, no, sir. I for all I know, there's ghost people living on that ship and I don't want to shoot them. But you didn't see anything moving on the ship. I didn't, no, sir. And you didn't see a name on the vessel. I didn't look, sir. I didn't know. Well, tomorrow, if we see it, we shall find out. Um, Question for the keeper, not not in character Mm -hmm. to the Hughes's. But how far away is Rutland from any kind of major waterway? Either a major trafficked river or the... uh, uh, actual ocean. That's a good question. Um, West, Western Mass is pretty dry. I mean, it's full of mountain stream sort of things, but I can't think of a major vessel. We are Western, water. not Eastern. Right. We're actually from dead Arkham. center. Yeah. Rud- Rutland is the okay. dead center of Massachusetts. Okay. So there's, there probably, I don't think there is a uh, commercial waterway. A commercial waterway? No, no, there's not. But there is. There are tons and tons and tons of little lakes and streams and ponds. And yeah, he's saying no... he's saying he's saying ship, not like boat, not like like it's when he when he's saying ship. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But when when I hear the word ship, I'm thinking it's a ship. You know, ship for ask... commercial use. Well, you're you're what you're hearing is me. Um, okay. In in my in my my book, a boat is something like the rowboat because you can put the boat onto a ship, uh, but right. a ship is something you couldn't load it onto uh, another ship. It's too big. Like, we can like ask if it. We can ask if it has masts. Oh yeah. yes, it's a sailing ship. Okay. One but it's not like less? an it's not like an old fashioned sailing. Ship. Yeah. So he says he says it seems more like a modern sailing ship so with mass with sail hmm. but you know like so a... schooner sized right i mean like it like it would be something that you would imagine would be crewed by a you know by a team of six or seven not not a one or two man pleasure craft not like somebody's sailboat that they're gonna put on a on a trailer and 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 pull from their house I don't know. So. Did it have one uh, set of sails or two or three? Um, well, I, I'd say there was, you know, it was a big triangle. Um, hmm. with like some fingers floating off. I, I don't really know how to, t- I don't know that much about boats. So hmm. it's like a big half a bug butterfly. I don't know. <laughs> I would like to do an experiment with uh, 
the Hugheses, Sam and Sarah, and see if they can uh, describe the ship to me. And I want to try and use my sketching, watercolor sketching skills in order to try and do a police sketch of the, uh, of the, of the boat in question until they can finally go. Yeah. 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 That's what I saw you know, between the two of them together, you know, helping to, to collaborate and, and give me advice on how to draw this out on what they well, saw. Um, what you're going to go with them is draw the, draw a straight line with the boat on the bottom and then a big triangle. That's that's about it. Okay. Um, they don't really remember really any details. They never went out towards it. They were on the shore. It looked like there was stuff on it, but not not people. They didn't see any people. So when they describe. This is what they describe. That's pretty much what they're describing. Yeah. With some more fiddly bits. Successful sketch. Check that. Yeah. That helps us out so much, that sketch, Dr. York. I and I and I pressed them, I said, any additional details? Well, there might have been more than one part to the triangle there were like some lines but maybe it wasn't one triangle maybe it was two triangles that made a big triangle it looked very triangular Hmm. and uh mr hughes if we are if we're here um we're near the house where you saw it for the first time Mm -hmm. And you were looking across the water, it's sort of in the middle there. And then you see the trees on the far side. Was the, was the uh, vessel at the same height as those trees or twice as high? Or was it reaching toward the moon? I'm not even sure how to answer that. I'd say the ship was at least 20... 30 feet high mm-hmm. to the top of the triangle. Mm-hmm. It was big, you know. Yeah. If you Maybe. pictured your cell phone or you could run along and run back. Uh, you know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe 40 feet. Mm-hmm. 50 mm-hmm. feet, maybe. Yeah. It's hard to tell when you're a little ways away from it. Yeah, yeah. Seems if y'all had some way to measure, mm. uh, I don't know. Tomorrow. If, if, I don't know if you can put a measuring tape on the ghost. And mm-hmm. no, but we can put calipers in front of a photographic frame to get a sense. Yeah. So, anyways, you um, you have a very nice dinner. She's she's a lovely cook. You have mm. Nice dessert. Um, your beds are soft and comfortable. Um, were you guys going to do anything that night? Oh, you said you were going to go out there in the dark. Yeah. All right. You go out there in the dark and it's dark. Um, he's, he doesn't have flashlights, but he has lanterns. So Mm -hmm. you guys can fiddle around out there. There's a lot of croaking noises and a lot of cricket noises still. Um, it's pretty loud. Uh, you know, that there's, you know, as you're approaching the pond, that there's definitely, frogs because you can hear the sounds of frogs get louder and louder as you get over there um you don't see any anything out of the ordinary as you're doing this Mm. uh and the pond is black you know in the dark yeah Uh, the moon though is almost full it's it's gibbous Uh, um almost almost completely yeah um so it's pretty well lit up otherwise Mm -hmm. A lot of the grass and weeds are dry, so they're uh, they're kind of that off yellow, that pale sort of yellow that reflects the light pretty well. I'm but paying it's clear a lot of attention to. Yeah, we go out there and 
get our pictures, take it in a couple places, maybe a couple more in the place in the uh, spots where I'm I'm going. And these are probably the best spots to put the cameras to be able to get a good measurement with the calipers once we develop the film. So you know. checking out. That's nice. Right. Mm-hmm. So you get all that worked out. And then eventually you guys go back inside and go to bed. Yeah. Uh, next morning comes, she fixes you a overly abundant breakfast. She's got, you know, eggs and sausage and ca- and uh, hot cakes and um, coffee. And um, this is a, you, you're almost guessing that she's got some Pennsylvania Dutch because she's doing an awful lot of cooking. <laughs> Thank you so um, much, Mrs. Hughes. Uh, the day goes. She gives you, you know, a nice lunch. Uh, dinner comes around, and it's getting dark again. And uh, what time do you want to head out to the pond and get ready? I was thinking it's a that. chilly night. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, like it's 2300 or 11, 11 o'clock. Oh, I, I'd go out a little earlier. I'm I, be fine about 10 o'clock just want to i'm i'm used to to lying in wait for uh, in safari so i'm i'll go out there and set up and at about 10 does, well, does yeah. anybody have astronomy i do yeah. uh dr gabe roll roll astronomy that is a 10 which is an extreme success Jeez. so one thing that you're aware of is that the full moon isn't necessarily full right at midnight that it hits full at a certain point in the evening and it can be before or after midnight. In this case, the way he was describing it, it made sense that it's drifting. You know, it's every right, month. It's, it's a little it's off. The of zenith, where it was. Yeah. The right. highest point that it reaches and how long it. So it gets up that. there and then, yeah, it waits until. All right. <clears throat> so um, you guys. Go ahead. I, does uh, Mr. Hughes in any of his farm equipment, does he have um, either uh, wood or metal, but any like, let's say uh, a set of uh, 15 foot long poles, anything that's long like that. Sure. And, do, and is it possible to get three of them? Sure. Yeah. Okay. I suggest for those who are capable and brave enough to go out on the boat during the day in preparation for this evening, why don't we take these three 15 foot long rods and just find an area to place the first one, drive it in. And maybe we tie a, like a red rag or a white rag at the end for the portion that's up. And then do our best to measure out 10 feet in a, in one direction, drive the next one, flag it, and then go 10 more feet in the same direction, drive it and flag it. So we'll have these three poles marking off 20 feet, you know, from zero, 10, 20. And then that'll help. Those flags will show up in the photography and we have to make sure that it's perpendicular to where the cameras are set up. So that if and when this event occurs and we're able to take some uh, photographs, that'll help in our measurements when we see them on, on film. We'll at least know if we can see those flags in, in, a, in the shot that we're looking at 10 foot gaps there. And then no matter how big it is, you know, we'll know if it's bigger than the 20. Interval right? will be determined. Yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll get a sense for interval. So uh, let's... <clears throat> Yeah, let's try and do that if that's possible. Yes, I don't mind uh, going out again. I don't mind the boat. I can do that. Yeah, it just, uh, I don't like the water. And I'll get some pictures <laughs> of the flags when they're already put up during the day so we yeah. can have them. Right. I'll try the same All right. from my vantage point. Mm-hmm. And Dr. So, Neruda, you have determined that the height of the full moon tonight will be... Walker when uh, probably well, about twelve forty or so. Okay, Excellent. closer closer to one a.m. Mm. Not bad. Twelve forty, and we have gotten we have uh, maybe we have brought from the city some 
uh, quality, important coffee that we can share with the Who's family. I don't want to drink chicory all night uh, so that we can have a couple of pots as we lie in wait for the apparition to appear. All right. So you guys are all in position. You're all ready. You're all within yelling distance of one another easily. Um, it's also a chilly night. The air is cold, so sound carries much better. Um, you barely, you practically just talk and hear each other. Um, I assume that you're in different places around the pond. Who yep. has the boat? Dorian and... I'm, I'm in the boat with Dorian. And Gabriel, okay. Yes. <clears throat> I'm attempting to set myself up opposite the shore from the uh, motion picture camera. Okay. So that I have the rear view of its uh, attempt. And I believe Teddy is over there as well in a duck blind. And I'll be uh, not sitting with Gunther, but I'll be, I'll be closest to Gunther so he and I can talk. Okay. You sit there. You hear all the crickets, the frogs making a lot of noise. Um, there's no, there's not much of a breeze, maybe a very slight breeze blowing. Um, the moon is looking down. The stars are all out. It's very clear. Um, everybody do a listen roll. Uh, hard, hard success. Regular, regular. One T nine is a regular success. Hard Fail. success. Fail. <laughs> Second roll in ninety four. <laughs> nice. That's that's the stew you know and love. <laughs> Those of you who who made it, um, you think that you can hear something. It's a very odd noise. It's almost as if something tiny was scratching on your eardrum. It's like a, a static sort of fiddling with you. It almost feels like it's coming from inside your ear. And you can all feel like, you feel like something's about to happen because all of the crickets and all of the frogs just suddenly go dead silent. And when they do, there is, there is a sudden rush of light. And like they described, it's almost as if something was moving. Let's say it was moving rather quickly in a direction, but it gets stuck in the pond and it looks like this. Almost like your picture. Yeah. Ooh, there it is. Mm. And it's much bigger than you thought it was going to be. Uh, with your poles out there, your estimate is it's at least 100 feet long. Oh, um, wow. Is uh, geez. Uh, and it's just, it's, it's sort of hovering there. Um, and the little uh, bits on the deck that look human sized are they static or are they moving no they're they're just parts of the boat um but as far as moving now you're sort of guessing that you're seeing what hughes was talking about the the sails on the boat they look like they're moving in the wind hmm. but the wind is moving very slowly so the ripples in the sails are very slow. Um, and there is little wind at all, I assume, there's, right there's now. No, yeah, there's, there's no wind at all. And it wouldn't be in that direction if it... Uh, and the uh, edges of everything sort of sparkle, like you said, like there's uh, seen almost fire. Yeah. Um, so this is my ignorance of boats. Uh, is that a uh, common boat shape for 1921? Right. Um, do, you know? do any of you have have any knowledge of boats? I have history. I have <laughs> history as well. 
Um, <laughs> how about just doing intelligence? Do an intelligence roll. Uh, 32. 32. Is a hard Ooh. success. I got, I got a hard as well. Three. Regular. Standard success. 96. Some of you, I just thought I made up boats. Some of you have been to Boston. Some of you have been, uh, you've seen the Charles River and things like this. This this looks like either an expensive yacht or a racing boat of some sort. I mean, I, I like they have. I think they have the off the coast of uh, Boston. They have the uh, like the World Championship uh, boat races. We do them every year. I'm busying myself taking photographs. Yeah. Photographs Going taking down the film. Gunther's chef. I. Chef. I, I I grew up in uh, in Buenos Aires, and this this is like a yacht. Yes, it yes it definitely looks like that. Uh, yeah. How close yeah. are we in the boat to it? Um. Well, uh, let's say you're near the shore, so you want to row out to it. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you start you start oh, rowing out to it, and um. As you're getting closer to it, there's a couple things you're noticing. There does seem to be a sound <laughs> with this ship. It's slight, but it's it's almost like static in your eardrums. It it feels more like it's in you than it's coming from. But the closer you get, the more sort of squelchy that sound is. Uh, and you can also feel the hairs on the back of your neck stand up like there's electricity you can also smell ozone in the air hmm. like uh like after a lightning strike um do a spot hidden for me this is rather odd to get rid of. the ship seems uh, to be there in every in perfect detail 27 uh, that's a hard success oh nine is a, an extreme success my dice okay. are really so dorian there. what you notice the first thing you notice is extremely odd. The ship seems to be on the water, but not on the water. It seems like not only has the ship manifested itself, but the surface of the water that the ship was sitting in is about a foot above the surface of the pond. So you're seeing the pond, then you're seeing another surface of water, and that's what the ship is sitting in. And you can see the ripples floating along the side of the ship, but it very slow, very slowly, like they're slowed way down, you know. Yes. Gabriel, what you notice is there is a name on the side of the ship. It's the Valkyrie 2, II 2. Hmm. This is a uh, rather odd giver. Val the Valkyrie, the Valkyrie too. And once the, a time the, the, that uh, the appearance as closely as I can. So from, from first, did it if it took, did it take more than a second to smear into view? No, it, it almost instantaneously, but you could definitely yeah. tell that it slid into view. So I'm watching the clock to see it go away. As compelling it is to keep looking at the ghost ship, uh -huh. Edison forces himself to look away and then start checking the the rushes and start looking at the hillside and just looking to see if I can see a light source, like a projection type of light source. But I'm, I'm looking at the rushes and then working my way out, but I'm doing what I can to avoid looking at the ghost ship to try and see if I can find the, the source. Do a spot hidden for me. An 06, uh, which is an extreme. Well, as you're moving around, because you'd need to sort of get it from different angles as you're mm -hmm. along the shore, 
you don't see anything. There should be like a beam of light mm-hmm. that would be coming from somewhere like in a movie theater. But you don't see anything like that. You also don't see what it would be projecting on because there's no fog or smoke or anything. It's, mm-hmm. it's just there. Um, hmm. Gunter, you're mm-hmm. thinking, wow, if this yeah. is an illusion. I got to get this trick. It's this brilliant. Is- but you're you're busy getting that yeah. that film footage. Uh, how how close are we getting to it on in the rowboat? You're getting close enough to where if you wanted to reach out and touch it, you could. I you do were. want to do that. <laughs> you reach be careful. Out and it's it's when you touch it, you get that sort of squelch in your ear, like like radio static. I mean, that's the way I would describe it, because it's like radio static. But you don't actually feel anything. Your hand goes right into it. Well, there's there's nothing here. It's just the sound. This is odd. Here, t- touch you... it. Touch it. There's there's what? a sound. Oh, oh. There's also another quality that you notice. That's that when you're looking at it, it appears solid, but you can see the shore over on the other side. Um, So you can see through it, but you can't see into it. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. If I like stood up in the boat, in the rowboat underneath where it is. Yeah, you could could row into it. Yeah. All right. Are you going to do that? All right. You row into it. And it's, it's, it's a very strange sensation because as your head moves into the deck, you can see inside the boat. And what you can see the is there's, it looks like there is a body, a, a man's body lying on the ground. He's not conscious, but... And there's no color, so you're just seeing that sort of purplish form. And if you row out the other side, or if you drift out the other side, it's the same thing. You can't see into the boat. Uh, Gabriel? Gabriel, uh, you did see that, right? Uh, Yeah, the the body in in the boat. Uh, Is that a sanity check? That's pretty... uh... This whole that. thing is very exciting. I'm not so sure that you Same. would be out of your mind. No, okay. no this is you uh, wrote more back. Back. Wrote back. Yeah, you're oh, more excited than you were. Yes, uh, yes, I will go back in. Don. Uh, but, uh, Before you can no. go back in, that sort of squelch heightens for a moment. The whole light of the thing sort of brightens for a moment, and then it's like the whole thing slides off in the other direction and it's gone. Gabriel, Gabriel, what did you say uh, the name of it was? Uh, the Valkyrie 2. The Valkyrie 2, it's a modern a modern yacht. We just saw a man unconscious, I guess. He yes. wasn't moving. Or if he was, was moving, he was moving very slowly. It's it like, like what a, what a still image of, yes. of a man asleep almost uh, uh, in what the, the interior. He was what lying my on the father floor, to, so he wasn't in a bed or anything. My father used to refer to things. Uh, he he used to not believe in this, but pre- a premonition almost. I, there's, I mean, lots of there's plenty of religions that talk about visions, uh, dreams that reveal the future. Um, this is this is odd. This is incredible. I uh, incredibly. I've odd. never seen a doctor. Case, anything quite like uh, it was only about ten minutes before it vanished. This time, it is getting shorter. It seems every time it's appearing. Oh. And we can. I will discuss this with. Uh, Neruda regarding, and perhaps others at the university regarding some kind of angular behavior as the autumn comes, it becomes shorter. Of it, course, it was richer, but it is odd. 
How long was the first uh, iteration, first manifestation? The guess was about 20 minutes. About 20, yeah. so. His estimation was that it was much longer. and He and wasn't that... really timing it, though. Yeah. yeah. Gabriel, uh, as we are rowing back to shore, I'd assume, uh, that it's so odd. How can something like that, it seemed to encompass its own body of water above the already existing it was, water? It, it was almost like, some kind of, uh, for lack of a better word, a spiritual manifestation, something not not tangible, psychic, yes. if you will, um, that was suspended over the pond. Something about the pond, if it was sweeping by, it seems to have gotten caught, did it not? It seemed to be traveling in like almost like a magnet catching a metal yes. object. It was held there for a moment before moving on. It's a sweeping transition. Something here drew it and stopped it at his most. Uh, it's peculiar, but it doesn't seem like it does any harm. It doesn't seem harmful in any way to... As we went through it, no, we had a little uh, bit of a... Yes, I, as fine as we I think that we are. Uh, it's, yes. a, it's a little... Uh, it's hard to explain. But at least you saw a name. We could, it might not mean anything, but it's something that we can add to our inquiries. We yes, can look into it. It was uh... a boat with a name's easier to find. We have a name. So from the shore, when they passed into the ship, did I just see like the bottom half of Gabriel? Because no, you could see them clearly. Okay. Yeah. You can actually, if you look carefully, you can see Dr. Uh, Dr. Kurz all the way on the other side of the pond as well. Mm, okay. It's definitely gotcha. like looking into a ghost. It's just hmm. you couldn't see into the ship until you were in the ship. Gotcha. gotcha. We, need, we need to relay our findings to the rest of the group. Well, we can assume you're doing that because you guys yeah. are all there. Yeah, we're, we're probably talking. Just... Yeah. Hmm. Um, you guys are all incredibly thrilled. I mean, this is something that is not, this is what you've been waiting for. This is something not easily yeah. explained. In, um, do, uh, do an intelligence roll, everybody. I am so excited I failed with intelligence. <laughs> Regular. Uh, hard success. Hard success. Do a hard success. Um, you you recall those of you who passed. You recall Professor Smythe used to talk about different different kinds of manifestations, and there's people who supposedly see ghosts, and we've always the, the society doesn't believe ghosts exist. People spirits, even if if there is an afterlife, they don't hang around. Um, the question always is, is that there's been Romans, you know, uh, why, why don't we find American Indian ghosts everywhere? Why don't we, you know, why, what, what's going on? But he says, then there's these things where there's accounts in history of people seeing objects or armies or um, things that seem to have disappeared uh, they see them as like odd manifestations and then they disappear. And this seems to be in that classification, what he would call haunting, but not ghost haunting. Mm -hmm. This isn't mm -hmm. a ghost. It's not a spook. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a reflection, it seems, from one time and place to another time and place. Yeah. Mm. That some sort of energy is being projected or trapped by certain variables. I would expect that we could follow some trajectory in space and find other recursions that happened along the same temporal cycle of moonlight or uh, some other uh, parallel 
physical activity that repeats in this way, we, we as it's also, clearly physical. And we, we need to also, I think, uh, find out this Valkyrie too, what, uh, what yes. type of history it has, where, I mean, has this uh, recently in the papers somewhere, a uh, ship we gone missing? Find its owner, its location, because I don't know, well, me and Gabriel for sure saw an unconscious man when we entered that. Mm. Yeah, that's certainly no projected image. Projected images wouldn't wouldn't have an image within an image. That's, that's so, under, uh, at least as far as I've heard. Uh, I mm. think you are right. Maybe we look into have there been any accidents involving this boat, or even just by Nona. It, it might. I don't know. It's we just need to look into it. We have a name. We know what it looks like per se. It would certainly be interesting to find out if there is a registered Valkyrie too. Uh, regarding the, f the figure you both saw as you passed through the image, did you describe it to one another? Did one of you see it first? Do you think it... I am not certain that um, this manifestation would appear identical to each party that received it. The photographs will help with that, but not we don't have photographs from the inside. Yes, but the, uh, the photographs are objectives where our, our individual eyes and perceptions are not. Everybody, each individual has such a unique life inside of them and a way of seeing that uh, any moment could be different from Numerous perspectives, but I a believe... moment. Did you did you already talk about what you saw inside the vessel with each other, or if we took you into different rooms and asked you five questions, might that be useful? That that could be useful. We we were in awe together on on the boat. But we haven't discussed it in detail. No, not in detail. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hmm. Uh, Doctor York, if you would do me the favor, and each of the uh, our other guests, uh, uh, each of us, we can. Uh, concocted just maybe three or four questions to see if we see the same things for both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I also want to do, uh, I'm sure we've all discussed the, the strange sound that we uh, heard and also felt. I want to do um, um, hearing tests on, on everyone just to see if everyone is uh, okay with that, you know, as far as, have we damaged our hearing and all that? Uh, and yeah, I wanted to, uh, I'll, I'll examine and question each man separately and, and gather notes on what they saw and then compare those notes. Uh, so I don't know if there's a role that I need to do for that. I would also, before I forget, I also want to note, because I'm not sure if it's going to be of any importance, you know, the, uh, the, the image, the projection has been diminishing in time. And uh, if it stays on a, uh, an even course, and if, uh, if Samuel's report of the first image being accurate at 20 minutes, and this one was at 10 minutes, it's losing two and a half minutes with each month each projection and at that rate uh this will be done and gone by march there'll be it'll be down to zero minutes in march meaning it won't it won't appear again so it's its last projection will be in february for only two and a half minutes so yeah. i kind of extrapolated that out and did the did the math on that but uh Although, of course, if it is a truly lunar phenomenon, that it might then grow again in the seasons after, because it appears to be linked currently to a cycle of 28 days. True. More or less. On how long it's, uh, yeah. How long is so, so, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Uh, Dr. York, you and I, I would like, we'll agree on three fundamental questions for the boat goers secretly, so they don't know. Right. So it's like, was the figure facing you for, with his feet toward you or his head toward you? Was the figure face up, face down? Was the figure dark haired or light haired? Something like that. Right. And we agree yes. on those keeper that 
you know, are consistent. Yes. And then we, and then you take uh, either Thursday or Block, and I take either Block or Thursday, and we have just a moment to see if people are inventing if it is a dream experience to be in this boat, or if it is a visual experience to be in this boat. Yeah. All right. Um, as far as the questions you ask. Now we're going to assume you guys are wrapping up for the evening. You're going back to the farmhouse. Uh, you, you're extremely excited. So mm. um, you're probably going to stay up for an hour or two because you, you I think probably we it. have a little a fire by the, between uh, the barn and the house where we couldn't. Well, you don't have to do it in the dark. You could go in the house and compare your notes. And, yeah. I mean, whatever you want, it is chilly. But um, in any case, as you're going over uh, things, uh, those kind of questions, yeah, they seem to have seen exactly the same thing. The and you all, you probably question one another because it's the details that you saw on the boat, that the way the sail was, the and so forth. It, it's all matches. You're all seeing the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Gabriel and Dorian do spot hidden worlds. Uh, that is just oh, a regular success. Oh, three. Oh, my goodness. Oh, three. Good old Naroda. Um, yeah. with, a, a, with a regular rule, that you, nothing stands out. But, Gabriel, you relate that you think there was a table inside and a book that was open in front of where the man had fallen down. Um. But you obviously couldn't see it, you know, or what it was. Um, you got the distinct feeling that he might have been reading, standing and reading from the book, and then fell. Because of the absence of a chair? Yeah, there was no chair there. Um, all right, we move I'm going to move it a little forward. So we'll assume the next day, unless you guys have something specific, uh, we'll assume the next day you guys pack up your stuff and you head back to Miskatonic. And everyone's uh, hearing seems to be fine. Everyone's recovered fine. Yeah. from the hmm. strange tinnitus. And you guys need to keep, you, you guys understand that certain levels of these weird things you guys keep to yourselves. Um, Miskatonic, of course, has a lot more library and records than you'd find anywhere in Rutland. Um, you want to find out more information. Right? Yep. Who wants to do that? Who wants to do a library right. role? I should uh, be looking, certainly. Is that be looking? I'm going to be developing the film. And the All right, you're developing the film. And I'll be mirroring Gunther. I want to learn this. Uh, try my hand as well. I'd be looking into it as well, like the okay. library stuff. So, so. Do your library role. It's those of you who are looking at it. That is uh, 25, which is a hard. Yes. 75 is a fail. 24 is just next to you and also a hard. Dorian gets the yes. brilliant idea of checking with some of the um, uh, people who are into boats, you know, especially like racing boats and see if there are records from that. You find definitely some stuff about the, the various uh, championships, uh, the America's Cup, for example. Um, and looking through those records, you discover that uh, the Valkyrie 2 did exist. Uh, it is a gaff rigged cutter well here i'll let you tell people the information that you find yes the valkyrie 2 uh gaff cutter built in 1893 steel frame a wooden hull and a pine deck competed in the ape america's cup competed in the ape america's cup second place vanished from bell harbor marina july 5th 1894 uh the owner case. The owner was uh, Wyndham Thomas, Thomas Wyndham, uh, Wyndham Quinn, first fall of Dunraven and Mount Earl, uh, born 12 February 1841, 
died he 14 die. he hasn't died yet <laughs> yes. Yes. he's a real per- he's a real person it's a real bite he, he would die. not yet he's still a fiddle he's fit as a fiddle right now don't worry I could say into the future that he will die yeah poor guy <laughs> see death so- in your future Oh, what a fantastic psychic. Some of the some of the records show that the boat sank. Some of them show that it was stolen. But the boat disappeared on July 5th, 1894 from Bell Harbor Marina, which is in uh we'll say it's in Boston. I think it's actually in New York. But we'll say it's in Boston for the sake of traveling there if you wanted to. Hmm. Go to Boston and see if there's any anyone who remembers it from that time period. Anyone available to question? I'm sure there would be. I mean, uh, there there are records. Um and the owner. We should talk to the yeah, owner. He's not dead. Think, thinking uh Wyndham. Uh, uh do a luck roll. For me, then. Who? Uh, you can do a luck roll. You were asking about uh, if anybody's around that still remembers. No. Okay. Um, there's nobody that remembers. They'll pull out the log books and uh, tell you once again that it seems to have. It. It was simply not there. Um, there had been a lot of storms uh, that were in that, uh, that particular time of year, a lot of summer storms. And there had been a large electrical storm. And when the storm was done, the ship wasn't there. They assumed that it sank um, or drifted out, but it was never recovered or found. Hmm. The current, uh, the owner of it, it, it literally only lasted for about a year because it was built, it raced, and then it disappeared. Uh, the current owner lives in England. He's not. Uh, he's not in the United States. He's, he's also pretty old. He's in his eighties, I think. Eighteen forty. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But you have all of this information. Hmm. Um, we also you, should compose a. Uh, a brief something to send to Smythe to um, tell him you, that we were. You take a look at the, the at the the movie that you made of the of the thing, and um, Gunter, you notice that if you play the the film fast, the boat looks like a regular boat. And the water is rippling at the right speed, and the the sails seem to be blowing slightly in the wind. Mm, so yeah. it's almost as if what you were seeing was somehow slowed down in time compared to what it should have been. But when you spin it up, it looked it looked like it was at normal speed. Mm. Hmm. Wow! Hmm. So it's very strange. Um, yeah. So to wrap this up. You guys collect your data. Um, you, you send the information on to Professor Smythe, who's in England. Uh, you probably set up so that you can come back to the farm the month later. Uh, and indeed, the manifestation is much shorter, but you don't really learn anything more. In fact, it's becoming so short that it's almost just a flash and then it's gone. Whatever it is that's sticking it, in, in in time is wearing out or whatever it is that's happening. Oh, so it's not the it's not the measured two and a half minutes shorter. It's it's, it's not it's not it's probably on a curve of some part yeah. that's doing it. Like um, a ge- geometric curve. Yeah, gotcha. Um, you do seem to notice that there is perhaps a correlation between. Uh, the moon's uh, exact phase and the position that you are on the planet 
uh, that it's like within a certain range of angle mm. that it seems to manifest right in that in that angle, but uh, almost like you're looking through a window. Uh, you put all of that together, and uh, you send that to Professor Smythe. Uh, so that was November. Then December, you checked again. January, you checked again, and it was literally a flash as it as it went by. And then nothing else. Uh, you continue to check throughout the year to see what's going on. It's now 1922. And then right about um, August 1922, uh, Gabriel receives a, another telegram. Gabriel Neruda, professor of theology at Miskatonic University. Good news, stop. I have been chosen to give Challenger Foundation lecture, stop. Outclass the upstart. Marconi, stop. Imperial Institute, London, Banquet, January 3rd, stop. Your data collected last year has proved invaluable, stop. Want to invite society investigators involved to share the honor, stop. Plenty of time to plan trip, stop. Lots of things to see in London, stop. Fantastic Mayan exhibit mod uh, modsily collection at British Museum, stop. Dress warmly, winter weather, stop. Julius Arthur Smythe, end. And so you were all invited across hmm. the sea to the Challenger Lecture, which is on January 3rd. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. We'll pick it up again next week. Our players included Morgan Llewellyn, David Gassaway, Stuart Lively, Keith Craig, Josh Harwood, and John Hook, with yours truly as the Keeper of the Secrets. We have a Discord server where you can chat with our other members, you can set up private games, and learn the finer arts of gameplay and game mastering. We provide audio-only versions of our shows free for you to download from Podbean or iTunes. If you'd like to support our show, please visit our Patreon account. Just a dollar to a month helps us a lot. Like, share, and subscribe to our channel and punch the bell icon for updates on our latest shows. And leave us some comments. We enjoy reading them and answer any questions you might have. This is Tom Rayleigh, together with all the members of our gaming club, inviting you to journey with us once again into the darkness for another adventure into the universe of H.P. Lovecraft and the Call of Duty role-playing game. Until next time, good luck and good game.